respected delegates, participants, solidarity partners, media sponsors, and everyone. Namaste and good afternoon from the Secretariat Office of Global South Coalition for Dignified Menstruation, Kathmandu, Nepal. It is a great honor and proud moment indeed. Before starting my speech, I would like to remember Kamla Vashin, the activist, poet, author, and strong advocate of dignified mission from India. She passed away in last September. I congratulate all friends and stakeholders across the globe who are supporting dignified menstruation as a global community. This year is the third year marking of dignified menstruation day, December 8. Every day, the number of individuals and organizations supporting dignified menstruation is increasing and that gives us immense pleasure. It inspires us, makes us more determined and to work towards dignified menstruation. In order to highlight the importance and urgency of dignified menstruation, I'm going to briefly share my menstrual journey. Exactly 40 years ago, I learned about menstrual discrimination from my mother. I saw the menstrual blood pouring across her legs. I was deeply traumatized by the stories and practices associated with menstruation through the observation of my three sisters and mother at home and gradually within my neighborhood. Please remember my hometown was Chitavan, a central part of Nepal. Almost every day, my level of traumatization and frustration increased as I observed various forms of menstrual discrimination. And my three sisters and mother kept reminding me every week at home. I began to notice that girls and women were considered of lower value at home, at school, in the fields and forest. In fact, everywhere. Eventually, I decided to get rid of all such sufferings, suffocation and pain. Therefore, at the age of nine, I left with the intention of committing suicide. Unfortunately, somehow it did not happen. And fortunately, I am here today with you. Let me continue my journey. The family and society where I was born was so closed and conservative towards girls. After my failed suicide attempt, I was dying every moment. One part of my mind kept thinking about how I could die. Why could I not be born as a boy? so that I could be pure, powerful, and privileged. Meanwhile, I was also thinking that I won't follow any kinds of menstrual discrimination as my sister and mother did, but I did not know how to go about it at all. While passing such days, and at the age of 14, I had my first menstruation. Without giving matters a second thought, I ran away from home for five days. I had no way to go, so I went to my eldest sister's home without knowing whether she would accept me. It was fortunate that she gave me shelter. I will be grateful to her and her husband for the rest of my life. My agonizing days were passing. Consequently, I started at nursing school. At age 16, I was enlightened by learning the fact that this universe exists because of menstruation. Forget about the science and technology or any power. Men are born because of menstruation and women have a power to bear them. Unfortunately, these same men also refer to women as dirty, impure, powerless, and so on. It was then that I began to deeply appreciate myself as being a girl, and I began to regret my earlier decision that I made seven years ago to end my life. Thus, I was enlightened and determined to work in the area of menstruation. As an unwanted girl and coming from poor rural family background, my dignified menstrual journey was not easy at all 
although I kept utilizing the opportunities wherever and whenever possible. In over three decades of my life journey, I have made so many mistakes and failures, but every day I'm learning. Let me explain. A profound realization that the work of mine for many years around menstrual hygiene was not changing the life circumstances of menstruators. The girls who had clean houses, access to product, internet, but not the dignity they deserved or wished for. It was this realization that confirmed to me that the menstrual hygiene is important, but only as a transitory solution. In UK, a recent research report found that 37% girls did not undertake sport due to menstrual discrimination. Menstrual discrimination is not only within my home or village or country, it is being practiced across the globe, irrespective of whether we are talking about the global north or global south. Menstrual discrimination may have different names, take different forms, and be witnessed in varying degrees across the life cycle of menstruators, but it is present everywhere. Menstrual discrimination refers to the stigma, taboos, shyness, restriction, deprivation, and or abuses that are associated with menstruation throughout the life cycle of menstruators. More importantly, the topic of menstrual discrimination is nowhere to be seen on the global stage. For instance, the global community have been preaching about the old dignity since 1948, International Human Rights Declaration, but the dehumanizing condition is a result of discrimination before, during, and after menstruation is heavily ignored and undermined throughout the narratives of human rights. Likewise, since 1979, global community has spent a lot of resources on preventing discrimination against girls and women under the frame of CEDA. Unfortunately, it is aid to acknowledge that Menstrual discrimination is a form of sexual and gender-based violence and violation of human rights. Here, you may disagree with me, but please listen, how could menstrual discrimination be included alongside traditional harmful practices such as child marriage or witchcraft? On this planet, human beings who are born with the uterus and ovaries, who menstruate and then more through the menopause transition suffering throughout the entire life cycle. Menstrual discrimination is not only the cause, but it is also the effect for other forms of sexual and gender-based violences. Here, I would like to challenge UN and CEDA committee in that I feel they are misleading. Let me share a case from Kenya, where a 14-year-old girl committed suicide in 2019 due to menstrual discrimination at school during her first menstruation. Furthermore, the home is not set place for menstruators in many parts of the world. The power construct and patriarchy is strongly evidenced within the home due to menstrual discrimination. Therefore, the girls consider themselves impure, powerless, and disadvantaged. Likewise, the boys consider themselves pure, powerful, and privileged. How can the girl who cannot say no to her parents or brother say no to teachers or friends at school or workplace or in relationship. Again, since 1994, globally, sexual and reproductive health gets huge attention and makes a big impact, but the ways to address menstrual discrimination are missing. Menstrual discrimination was once again sidelined during the drafting the Sustainable Development Goals. Nine goals out of 17 goals directly led to menstrual dignity. Let me give an example. Goal number eight is decent work and economic empowerment. If the workplace is not dignified menstruation friendly, it creates an undignified situation, especially for the person menstruating and for those people who are premenopause and menopausal. More importantly, menstrual discrimination does not only impact the five days of bleeding, it impacts the full life cycle of its menstruators. Menstruators experience a series of conditions that are undignified or lead to indignity, irrespective of whether during or after menstruation or menopause, these are forms of sexual and gender-based violence. Is a even defined the sexual and gender-based violence? Of course, it is a violation of a woman's rights in so many ways, 
menstrual discrimination is an underlying cause and effect for sexual and gender based violence therefore it is the most urgent and important to bring the matter into conscious awareness throughout the full 16 days activism during my journey of menstrual struggles both my two sisters had gone through surgical menopause due to fibroids within the uterus they were so desperate for a hysterectomy and wanted to fly but they their wings were cut off unexpectedly they had to go through emotional and physical sufferings as a result of surgical menopause their health professionals did not pay serious regard to it as a nursing fellow myself i also did not know much about it both from academic as well as patient practice i learned that menopause is a subject no one is particularly concerned about about because they have marriages and children already my sister struggled with their personal life relationship work and everything due to surgical menopause this is just one case only more importantly there is widespread silence including within healthcare systems and practices the media the activist academia and everywhere do not see menopause as a matter of their concern it's a sad but real i also learned that menstrual discrimination is complex menstrual discrimination connect with the sex select, selection uh, selection abortion menstrual discrimination connect with the sex select, selection abortion girl child rearing marry childbirth and it goes on until death it also has a significant impact on social cultural political economical technological aspects of society in both the short and longer terms therefore it needs an holistic approach to address at individual and global level and that holistic approach is achieved through the dignified menstruation as a survivor of menstrual discrimination i founded a global network called global south coalition for dignified menstruation to changing the narratives around menstruation despite having zero funding we have been moving forward and reaching across the globe in many ways and the number of supporters are increasing we do evidence based advocacy research publications and so on dignified menstruation is simply a freedom from menstrual discrimination for everyone for every moment throughout the life cycle of menstruators any business that is associated with the menstruation should put dignity at at the front and center more importantly it is cross cutting issue for gender equality and or just society regardless of global north or south today is the third international dignified menstruation day and globally together we are celebrating dignified menopause and i proudly share that i am riding the journey of my perimenopause along with the guidance of friends who have contributed to surgical menopause thank you alan kem it was truly an honor to translate your book into nepali i gently remind all politicians governments media main religious leaders to listen to the survivors first please no more assumption no more misconception funds should be made available to prioritize dignified menopause research publications and for reaching out reaching out to the last mile menstruators here i challenge the un and international organizations menstrual discrimination must be addressed as a stand alone issue instead of under traditional harmful practices and i also urge every stakeholder including those from the private sector to revisit to revisit their strategies and plans to ensure they bring dignified menstruation to the front and center of their future priorities and finally on behalf of global south coalition for dignified menstruation i express my heartfelt gratitude and thank each of you organizations networks and networks who march along with us although the trail is tough because dignified menopause is still very young moment we all need to nurture and support it to ensure a dignified menopause for all our sisters daughters and granddaughters thank you namaste